Good morning, Professor Giselle Subran. We'd like to thank you to have invited us in the Hôtel Dieu, right in the center of Paris, close to Notre Dame. And we'd like to thank also Professor B.R. Cohen, who is, I guess, your chief. Uh, you have been involved in the research of ARND for a number of years. Do you think there are still subjects or points that to be discovered in the future? First, I think I have to thank you to be here and to tell you how happy I am to welcome you in the Cochin Pool with the help of Professor Brezin and Professor Béarquen. I'm very happy here. Regarding AMD, you know that I'm involved in that disease and completely devoted to that disease since ever. And with the avail availability of the different means of examination, we have progressively acquired knowledge first on well-defined pre-epithelial new vessels, then on sub-epithelial or curled new vessels. Then we discovered chorioretinal anastomosis and ICG, as well as polyps, especially in Asians, more than in Caucasians. However, now with OCT, optical coherence tomography, we are also beginning to see histologically or nearly pseudo-histologically, the modifications of each layer of the retina. And there, obviously, we are going again to make progresses and to identify things that were already there and that we are now able to call and identify. Naturally, the most important question is, are the cures available today effective? Do they re reply to the answer? Do they cure the situation or do they simply try to cure the situation? I will try to be a little bit systematic. First, for the precursor, we don't have anything. Second, for the wet, uh, the dry AMD, we don't have anything. It's only for wet AMD that we have a large armamentarium now of possibility of treatment. The most recent ones are the anti-VEGF that are against leakage from new vessels and those are really very efficient. There are at least three types of these products available around the world. The main problem today is uh, their cost. So when I say available, it's available to our developed countries, of course. It's not available to the other countries. However, we can, I can modulate that statement in saying that to get wet AMD, you need to get older. And in less developed country, you don't reach the, that uh, high level of age. So there is a balance, however. But we can be really very efficient. We, do we are able to stabilize the vision in more than 60% of cases. And there I would like to emphasize that I said stabilize. That means that if the patient comes with 2020, he will be stabilized at 2020. But if he comes with 2200, he will be stabilized at 2200. So the earliest, the best. Second, uh, these treatments are not working in 40%. So we must always remember, it's not a mir miracle for everybody. It's a miracle for two thirds of the population. And uh, only one third will improve their vision. That's resurrection. And that's really, for us, amazing to see restoration of something that has had been lost. Now regarding prevention, do you have recommendation to be made to the vast majority of patients who are reaching a certain age? We have very few data. 
for a recommendation for prevention. There is a very large study, the ARID study, performed in the States that ev evidence that nutritional supplementation in vitamin E, A, C decreased the occurrence of wet MD, but not of dry and not of precursors. Presently, there are other trials underway, always uh, sponsored by the NIH, and that's RS2, where the exchange, they put in addition lutein and dioxantin. You know, it's that pigment that is going into our macular area and that our body is not able to sensitize. So it must come from nutrition. So maybe that will help us to try to slow down the, the rate of complications. Possible, but not, not a lot of evidence. Anyway, as I am French, I could really uh, just say that in France we do have a diet, and a diet that is demonstrated to help to decrease the rate of neovascular AMD. It's like the great Greek diet as well. It's the famous Mediterranean diet. And as you know, all the Mediterranean, they like to eat well and good vegetables, good fruits, and that will help, possibly. Among all the different cures that are available, do you foresee in the future brand new ones that would be a real treatment for ARMD? That's a very stimulating question. First, I think that we will have some other ways, other pathways to tackle the EGF as well as the other growth factors in order to decrease the amount of fluid coming from the new vessels. That's obvious. That's coming very quickly in the next two or three years. We will have plenty of uh, medication over the counter, really plenty. After, there are some quite interesting uh, approaches, which is by uh, introducing into the, the eye or the body some capsules containing engineered cells that are going to release anti-angiogenic factors or any factor that might help to decrease the invasion of new vessels or the extension of atrophy. So we might have in our eyes factories that are building up the good products. And that's also already on the way. In addition, you know that uh, inflammation plays a large role, and especially through CFH, is that factor that was uh, discovered in, uh, what, 99, for in five teams at the same time, in 2009, sorry, in five teams the same year, which is amazing, okay? That factor, we, if we play on that factor, we might really change certainly the established AMD, but also as the factor was identified in Drusen in the precursors, we might be able, if we can administer it properly, we might be able to change and decrease and clean up our eye from these deposits that are chosen. And endly, there is another way. It's improving aging. And improving aging, it's not just a joke, but you know that our cells are program programmed for living 120 and even 180 years. So if we can get close to the programs of the cells that are regulating that aging, oof, 
AMD will disappear. I hope so.